subscribe, and hit the bell icon. The Goliath Bird Eater Spider. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Hero, I'm gonna explore the garden. I'll be using my magnifying glass to look out for interesting animals. Let's go. Hey, look at this. It's a spider's web. It's the spider. Spiders spin webs to trap insects for food. Let's look for other interesting animals, Hero. Look, it's a hole in the ground. Maybe a rabbit lives here. Listen, I hear the rabbit coming out. Here it comes. Yikes! That's not a rabbit, that's a huge spider. Better keep a distance, Hero. I've never seen such a big spider before. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Now hold still, spider. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything about the spider? You're just in time, Leo. This is a Goliath bird eater spider. It's one of the biggest spiders in the world. Although it's called the Goliath bird eater, it almost never eats birds. Sometimes it eats baby birds and eggs, but mostly it eats small animals and insects found on the ground. The Goliath bird eater has venomous fangs, but it doesn't have teeth to chew it. So, after catching an animal, the spider releases juices onto the animal's body to make it soft. The animal's body will become soft enough for the spider to slurp up. The Goliath bird eater is such a good hunter that it doesn't need a web. It can sneak up and pounce on its prey. It will then bite and kill its prey with its venomous fangs. It's not deadly to humans, but it can be very painful. How come I've never seen such a large spider here before? That's because the Goliath bird eater is usually found in the northern part of South America, where it lives in the rainforests. Our garden is certainly not the place for such a giant spider. Let's bring it back to the rainforest where it belongs. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Welcome to the rainforest, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you've brought along a Goliath bird eater spider. Yes, Ranger Rocky. We're trying to bring it back to its home. The Goliath bird eater has large fangs, which it can use to defend itself. However, it can also defend itself by rubbing certain parts of its body together. This will create a scary and menacing sound. Another way to defend itself is by releasing tiny, sharp hairs, which irritate your skin and can hurt your eyes. Goliath bird eaters like to live in wet or swampy areas, deep in the rainforest. There, they dig burrows to live in. Also, make sure to keep a lookout for animals like hawks and weasels that hunt for Goliath bird eaters. Good luck, Junior Rangers! Thank, Thank you, Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! The ground is getting muddier. The Jeep might get stuck in the mud. So let's continue on foot. Okay, Leo. What was that? <laughs> oh, it's a weasel. Weasels prey on Goliath bird eaters. It's moving so fast. I think it's trying to get the spider. Oh no! We should help the spider. Come on, Hero. Let's chase the weasels away. Wait, Leo. Remember what Ranger Rocky said? When the spider is defending itself from predators, it can release tiny, sharp hairs that are very painful. We should keep a distance. You're right, Katie. But what else can we do to scare the weasels away? 
I... I don't know. I can't find anything. I don't think we can scare the weasels away with water, Hero. Whoa! What are you doing, Hero? That's a great idea, Hero. It might work if we shoot the water out our bottles. Let's do it. Shoo, weasels! Leave the spider alone! We did it! The weasels are gone! Here you go, spider. Back into the tank. Look! It's digging a burrow to live in. We did it! We found a home for the Goliath Bird Eater Spider! Hooray! We found a Goliath Bird Eater Spider in our garden! We learned that Goliath Bird Eaters dig burrows in the ground and that they live in the rainforests of South America. So we brought the spider back to the rainforest where it made a new burrow to live in. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Sunda Slow Loris. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. Hey, what's that sound? Oh, it's a truck. The driver must be in a hurry. What is it, Hero? It's an animal. Don't be afraid. We won't hurt you. Oh, the cage is locked. I'm sorry, animal. I can't open it. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Over here. Find anything, Katie? Yes, I did, Leo. The animal you found is a Sunda slow loris. A slow loris will freeze and cover its face when it feels it's in danger. This position allows it to lick its elbows, which will give the slow loris a toxic bite. This bite is painful and can make you very sick. I can't believe the slow loris has a toxic bite. It looks so cute and cuddly. Many people think so too, which is why slow lorises are captured and sold as pets. Sadly, slow lorises do not live long when they are kept as pets. The slow loris is also endangered, which means it's in danger of disappearing forever. I see. So where does the Sunda slow loris come from? Sunda slow lorises live in rainforests in Southeast Asia. They are nocturnal, which means they sleep during the day. During the night, they slowly climb around in trees looking for food like fruits, plants, insects, and even eggs. The truck you saw earlier could belong to an illegal pet trader, or maybe it was someone from Animal Protection taking the slow loris back to its home. Then we should do that too. This slow loris belongs in the wild. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Hello, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you have a Sunda Slow Loris with you. Yes, Ranger Rocky. We found it inside this cage, but the cage is locked. Let me help you there, Leo. There you go, buddy. Careful, Ranger Rocky. The Slow Loris has a toxic bite. You're absolutely right, Katie. And that's why only trained professionals like myself should handle this animal. Good, it still has all its teeth. 
You get some rest, buddy. Why are you checking for its teeth, Ranger Rocky? Normally, this slow and gentle creature is non-aggressive towards humans. But if the slow loris feels threatened, there is always the chance of it biting to defend itself. So before slow lorises are sold as pets, their sharp teeth are often pulled out. Without its teeth, a slow loris cannot be returned to the wild. Because without its teeth, a slow loris cannot hunt, eat properly, or defend itself. So it's a good thing the slow loris still has its teeth. Correct. This means you can safely return it to the wild. The slow loris likes to spend most of its time in trees. So if you want to find a home for the slow loris, you should look for tall, leafy trees. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, you, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. This track is really narrow and bumpy. Leo, the cage with the slow loris fell out. Let's go down and have a look. There it is. It seems like it's doing okay. Oh no, it's a sun bear. Uh. Careful, everybody. We can't make any sudden move. The slow loris is moving too slowly. It'll never get away in time. Oh no, slow loris. Hey. What just happened? The sun bear smelled the toxic saliva on the slow loris' fur. So the sun bear knows that the slow loris is not good to eat. Well, that was close. Now let's get you back to the jeep. We did it! We found a home for the Sunda Slow Loris. Great job, everyone. Hooray! We found a Sunda Slow Loris in our garden. We learned that the Slow Lorises should not be kept as pets, but that they belong in the wild. So we went to the rainforest to find the Sunda Slow Loris a home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The honeybee. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I'm a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. It's a perfect day for a picnic. We have chocolate cookies, cakes, apples, and bananas. And look, I even have your favorite doggy snacks. Not so fast, Hero. We have to wait for Katie. Let me call her. A bee? Hey, don't go near the cakes. Hero, careful. You're knocking over all the food. I wonder where it came from. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. This bee is a honeybee. A honeybee? Yes, a honeybee. There are many different types of bees, but this one is an eastern honeybee. It has distinct golden yellow and brown stripes across its body. Where do they come from? Eastern honeybees come from South and Southeast Asia. They can be found in many countries. There, the honeybees collect nectar from flowers by eating the nectar. When these worker honeybees return to the beehive, they give the nectar to other worker honeybees. These honeybees will put the nectar in the honeycomb cells and use their wings to fan it. This will change the nectar into honey. The bees will use the honey as a food source. So that's how honey's made. Hey, what kind of shape is that? That's a hexagon. Honeycomb cells are shaped that way because they use the least amount of beeswax to build a beehive. Honeybees prefer to build their beehives in small spaces, like hollow trees. Hmm. 
if we want to have a peaceful picnic, we should bring this honeybee back to its beehive. Come and join us. That's great, Leo. See you downstairs. Ranger Rocky! Hello, Junior Rangers. Welcome to the forest. Ah, is that a honeybee? Yes, Ranger Rocky. We are trying to bring him back to his beehive. Not him, Leo. This is a female bee. It's a she. This is clear from her yellow stripes. And all worker bees are female. Worker bees are responsible for gathering nectar, building the honeycomb cells, feeding the babies, Tending to the queen bee... There's a queen? Yes, the queen makes all the baby bees. It has a longer body and smaller wings. The male bees, also known as drones, are rounder in shape and have bigger eyes. These drones only have one job, which is to help queen bees from other beehives make babies. The drones don't have a sting like the female worker bees do. A uh, sting Honeybees only sting if they feel their beehive is in danger. These hard-working creatures just want to protect their colony. Where can we look to help this honeybee find her colony, Ranger Rocky? Hmm, bees are attracted to brightly colored flowers. Perhaps you can start looking for those. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Here we are at the flower field. I see flowers, butterflies, birds, but no bees. Let's try to look for a beehive in a tree. What is it, Hero? You already found a beehive? Great work. But this bee looks a bit different, though. Careful, Junior Rangers. That's not a honeybee. That's a wasp. And unlike the honeybee, a wasp can be very aggressive. Oh no! More of them are coming out! That's bad news, Leo. Honeybees will die after they sting, but not wasps. They can sting multiple times. You better run! There's some water. Let's take out our snorkel masks and jump right in. That was close. Oh no, where's the honeybee? The jar is gone. It's the honeybee. She's hiding in a honeysuckle flower. Come in, honeybee. We'll make sure we stay far away from those wasps. Goodbye, bee. We did it. We found the beehive of the honeybee. Yay! We found a honeybee in our garden. We learned that honeybees have workers, a queen, and drones, and that they make honey. So we went to a forest and found a tree with a hollow that contains a hive. Good job, children. You did it! You are amazing wildlife rangers! The Equatorial Spitting Cobra! Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. I wonder where that frog is going. Let's follow it too. Careful, Hero. You'll scare the frog away. Huh? Something else is hidden inside the bush? Ah, a snake! <laughs> Better keep a distance, Hero. It's a snake in our garden. 
You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Yikes! Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. I sure did. The cobra you found is an equatorial spitting cobra, also known as a black spitting cobra. It is called a spitting cobra because it is able to shoot venom from its fangs. Venom is a toxin, like poison, and is found in some animals such as cobras. Venom can be passed to a person or another animal through a bite or sting. Many cobras defend themselves by injecting venom through their bite, but a spitting cobra prefers to spit or spray venom at a predator's eyes to scare them away. The spitting cobra wiggles its head the same way your eyes move. This helps the cobra's aim when it sprays its venom. That's scary! Actually, spitting cobras are shy animals. They only attack when they feel threatened. Still, equatorial spitting cobras can shoot venom up to three meters away. So it's best to keep your distance. I'll make sure to remember that, Katie. Equatorial spitting cobras live in different forests in Southeast Asia, where they eat small animals like lizards, frogs, and rats. Hmm. I don't think it's safe for us to be near the spitting cobra. We should return the cobra to its natural home. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Welcome to the forest, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you've brought a special friend with you today. Here, you'll need these if you're going to be near that spitting cobra. Glasses? Safety glasses, Leo. The venom from spitting cobras can harm your eyes. That's why it's very important to wear these glasses for protection. When threatened, the spitting cobra will aim to shoot its venom at an enemy's eyes. The venom that the spitting cobra sprays causes pain to the eyes and sometimes blindness. You will know when you've gotten too close to a cobra when it flares the flap of skin around its head and neck. This flap of skin is called a hood. A cobra will spread its hood when it feels threatened. I see. We'll be careful not to get too close to the cobra. We're trying to find the spitting cobra's home. Do you know where we should look? Spitting cobras like to live near water, in burrows or under rocks, where they can hunt for food. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank you, Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. What's wrong with the cobra? The spitting cobra is getting into a defensive pose. Why does it keep flicking its tongue? Spitting cobras have a very good sense of smell. They use their tongues to pick up scents in the air. Do you think it might have picked up the scent of a predator? <laughs> <gasps> they don't look very friendly. They are mongooses. It says here that the mongoose is the cobra's natural predator. You see that? The cobra sprayed venom at that mongoose, but the mongoose looks fine. It says here the mongoose is resistant or immune to cobra venom. That means cobra venom has no effect on the mongoose. What do we do now? We're surrounded. I'll clear a path for us. Thanks, Katie. Hold on tight, everyone. We did it! 
We found the spitting cobra's home. Great job, everyone. Yay! <laughs> found an equatorial spitting cobra in our garden. We learned that the spitting cobra can spray venom when threatened. That's why it's best to keep a safe distance from the spitting cobra. So we went to the forest and brought it to its natural home, far away from other humans. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Hola, exploradores juniors. Check out our Spanish channel by clicking the link in the description below. See you there!